This is all part of a concerted national strategy that involves privatizing prisons, schools, and healthcare. And that's what we're seeing here, is the privatization of our behavioral health system so that private companies can make as much money as they possibly can squeeze out of it, even if that involves reducing services. It's the pendulum swinging ever more rapidly between two very different approaches to behavioral health. One is corporate profit first, the other one is services and nonprofits. All of these 15 agencies are nonprofits. All five of the Arizona companies coming in to take their place are for profits. And the theory is that these for profits will not commit fraud. I don't know if they will or not, but I do know they're not going to provide as much service as the nonprofits are because they're going to skim all they possibly can for their primary market or their primary audience, their stockholders. This is the rationale for what was already decided in advance that these 15 would not be part of Centennial Care. That's what this is about, keeping them out of the next type of managed care in the state, the next way of paying for behavioral health. None of these 15 will be able to be in it, because even if they're cleared, a lot of them will be out of existence, and their names will be so besmirched that they really will not be able to contract with the big national companies running the behavioral health under Centennial Care.